Oh yeah, Lightfoot, Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. Our men carjacked Cook County judge as she pulled into her garage with three-year-old son. Yeah, all right, there you more, Miss Lori Lightfoot, doing a great job up there in Chicago, keeping things all in line. I can't see. Uh, a little bit about this. Chicago Judge Anna Luftus was carjacked outside her West Town home on Thursday night. Judge Anna Luftus was able to get her three-year-old, excuse me, son out of the car before the armed robbers took off with her car, purse, and iPhone. I would have much rather had a Samsung myself, but apparently the robbers doesn't care about being tracked or, or their information being stolen. Some of these carjackers need to wake up. Anyways, uh... Man, it's pretty rough. It's actually a pretty violent scene because carjackers had put a gun to the head of the Cook County Circuit Court judge outside her West Town home on Thursday night, but the judge was able to get her three-year-old son out of the car before hijackers drove away with her vehicle. The carjacking came one night after armed men robbed West Loop Restaurant valet attendant and escaped with luxury SUVs that belonged to two Chicago Blackhawks players. According to the CPD report, the 52-year-old judge was pulling into her garage on the 1500 block of the North Campbell when two men approached her around 1131. So that means she had her child at 49 years old. Kudos to the people having them babies late in age. Yep. Got that, uh, got that, uh, estrogen going on. She still has pretty good. So that's good for her. Good that she can still do that. All right. Uh, one, one of the men put a gun to the judge's head and ordered her out of the car. The offenders robbed the judge of her purse and her Look at you, iPhone, then climbed into her, what's all your phones are like that, but anyways, iPhone's way worse. Then climbed into her 2018 Subaru. Ooh, okay. Yeah, uh, the robbers. I can see where we're going with this. They're like iPhones, are like Subarus. The report said she was able to remove her three-year-old boy from the back seat before the men left. No injuries were reported, except for the people who got spotted in the Subaru and picked on by their buddies. Yep, all their friends were like, yeah. So anyways, I'll link that in the comments. So. <laughs> More woke news. 25-year-old. Guatemala, Guatemalan. Okay, I got that one right. Guatemalan soccer star dies after suffering heart attack in training. <laughs> Not laughing at him. I'm laughing at me and my poor reading skills. That's public education for you right there. Another young soccer football star, football star, has died after suffering a sudden heart attack. 25-year-old Marcos Malindo died after suffering a heart attack on Monday. The Guatemalan foot, football player complained of breathing difficulties before he dropped, this son reported. Uh, Gua, uh, the, the, the Portivo Mar, Marquez defender complained of, okay, Marquezan defense Defender complained of breathing difficulties during a session while preparing for a new session. He's like, man, I can't breathe, man. Melinda received, uh, Melindo received emergency CPR at the Marquisa Dalla Asunana Stadium in San Marcos. I live in America, so bear with me. He was then transferred to the hospital Da Espalachaladades, <laughs> where he died. I'm not laughing at the guy. I'm laughing at me again. I can't read. The, 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 the century back was instrumental in helping Deportivo win Guatemala's second division title last campaign. That's a game, not a campaign. Well, the wording. We have just decided to take words and just do whatever we want with them now. They were crowned as Lega de Asiano champions in December on the day that Melindo turned 25. Oh, and as you know, four other young soccer stars have died here recently. It's a picture of these, and also I'll link this stuff. But uh, yeah, <laughs> this right here, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little bit about because this is an attack on society. This is the uh, the a left's way of an attack on society and children. Okay, um, I remember a day whenever it was a thing to be healthy, to eat right, to have a you know used to you'd have eat you wanted you to eat certain foods that were good for you so you'd have a well balanced meal so your brain would develop and you would develop and have deep, you know muscle strength and you know you would grow and you it, it, so this right here defies all that this doesn't make any sense uh rapper lizzo flaunts obesity and uh she's taking a tiktok video of herself dancing in either a shower curtain i believe the shower curtain could be or well, i don't know whatever it is but rapper lizzo Shared a video displaying her obese figure while dancing in one piece swimsuit on Sunday. It's past Sunday, I reckon. She has 1.8 million followers on Twitter. Um, she had a message about, you know, quote unquote, bro, I'm gaining weight and I'm looking good. 
Mm -mm. Uh, the thing is, it's like whenever you've got impressionable children who are watching her videos and what she's doing, thinks that they're that she is that you're you, you go ahead and get be big as a truck, and then whenever you're you're in school and you you have no boyfriends, uh, you have a it just it, it's it's a it's a it's I feel sorry for kids who are obese because it's the parents' fault. I know that this is going to probably offend a few people, but uh, work hard and don't pay attention to Lizzo. She's trying to damage you and your children. If you think it's okay to be this way, it's not. I promise you, nobody. You're gonna. You're just opening yourself up for a just. Uh, uh, if you can't help it, so be it. But just don't pin, Just don't watch Lizzo. That's an, what she's doing is an attack on society. She's been employed by the left to attack society and children. So, anyways, I'll get off of this before I offend too many more people. But I'm only bringing this to light because I'm seeing a lot of psyops that are taking place. And the only reason why somebody like that's being glorified is because they're trying to screw society up. Mess up kids. Okay. And once again, luckily, the Democrat and the left party... And their operatives are not a ring of child molesters or rapists, anything like that. I mean, it's a good thing they're not. But, so I'm just going to bring this one article of a rare situation of a Democrat. P Pennsylvania Democrat commissioner arrested for raping 15-year-old boy and then released on bail. Hmm. Okay. Pennsylvania Democrat commissioner was arrested and charged last week for raping a 15-year-old boy back in 2017. 50-year-old Marvin Smith reportedly lured the teen into his car in Philadelphia. He Philadelphied him. All, uh, according to reports, Smith told the juvenile he would give him a ride home. However, he drove the boy to a remote park and then sexually assaulted him. The juvenile re reported the sexual assault to Philadelphia. And I almost read, it's hard not to uh, misread Philadelphia for pedophilia. So we'll just call it. Juvenile reported sexual assault and pedophilia police in April 2019. Um, it's unclear why the investigation into sexual assault of a minor took more than two years before Smith was arrested. Darby Township Commissioner Marvin Smith was arrested for allegedly sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy after luring him into his car in pedophilia in 2017, I mean Philadelphia in 2017. Smith, who is 50 now, is a Democrat elected as the commissioner representing Darby Township's first ward in 2019. He is charged with the rape, statutory sexual assault, luring a child into a motor vehicle, and other offenses. Pedophilia, I mean Philadelphia, Police Department, spokesperson Eric McLaurin, Confirmed on Friday, Smith turned himself in on Tuesday. A warrant had been issued for his arrest on November 22nd. Court documents show that Smith posted a $100,000 bail on Wednesday and was released pending on his next court date scheduled January 5th. In April, 9th, in April 2019, the boy told P pedophilia, I mean Philadelphia police, he had been sexually assaulted by Smith. August 12, 17, McLaurin said the victim's age was set, was 15 at the time, which still puts him under the age of 18. According to the court documents, Marvin Smith was released from jail. He posted a $100,000 bail pending Wednesday court's date. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good thing they don't, that they don't, they're not like that. They don't, uh, they don't uh, mess up 2020 people picking processes either, do they? No. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, here we go. Uh, a little bit of PPP going on. This is in Wisconsin. Okay, Madison, Wisconsin. We all know what's going on up there. Come on, Michael Gableman. Bring it home. Come on now, Michelle Branson. I know you guys are working hard for us up there, so we're going to give you a lot of big old thumbs up. The former Wisconsin Supreme Court Justice Republicans hired to investigate the 2020 presidential choosing wants a pair of Madison City officials to turn over documents and submitting and, and submit to re questioning. Uh, Madison Mayor Sataya Rhodes Conway on Monday released subpoenas that Michael Gableman issued December 28th to the city's information officer, Sarah Edgerton, and finance director David Shmaldicki, whom the subpoenas erroneously refers to by the first name as Old Dan. Old Dan. 
Uh, the subpoenas deemed the Edgerton Turnover City Election Commissions and Records at Gableman's Brookfield office January 13th and 19th. She also must submit a question at the office of at, at the office on February 14th. The subpoenas are demanded. Are, are the subpoenas also demand that Schmidicki turn over <laughs> election records detailing private grants the city used to help run the elections on January 19th at the Brookfield office. Rhodes. Conway issued a statement Monday calling Gableman's investigation a waste of time and taxpayer dollars. The mayor did not say whether Edgerton and Schmaduki would comply with subpoenas. However, asked whether they would comply, Deputy Mayor Kitty Crawley, Katie Crawley, who handles media inquiries for Rhodes and Conway's administration, said only that the city's attorneys was reviewing the subpoenas. Part of Gableman's investigation is focused on whether Madison and other Democratic-leaning cities in Wisconsin improperly accepted nearly $9 million from the Facebook Founder Center for Tech and Civil Life to help administer the, the choosings. La, la, la. The former justice has subpoenaed the mayors of the state's five largest cities as well as Wisconsin's Choosings Commission's administrator, Megan Wolf, who are, is a very mean and ugly woman who needs to wear a mask to keep us from having the eye aids, to submit... A, to question it at Brookfield. Uh, so far, no one has complied <laughs> with the demand. Gableman has filed a lawsuit in Waukesha County seeking to force Rhodes, Conway, and Green Bay Mayor Eric Ger Gen Genrich, Genrich to appear or put them in jail. This case is still pending. The State Department of Justice, led by Democratic Attorney General Josh Call, has filed a lawsuit seeking to quash the Wolf subpoena. So they don't want Megan Wolf getting in trouble. They're, they're they're trying to do this, and so isn't this weird? Why, if you're got if the, everything was good to go and you did everything like you were supposed to, you got nothing to hide. It was an, if anything, it was an accident. Slap on the wrist, you'd be like rock and roll. I'm here. You let one of them people not show up for one of those stupid January 6th subpoenas and see how they like it. They get all up in a roar. Mainstream media all up in everybody's guts and just raising all kind of heck about it. And so these people here have been not adhering to subpoenas left and right. Nobody says anything but me. And I'm going to say it. Anyhow, Assembly Speaker Robin Voss hired Gableman last summer to review the, the choosings after former President 45 said Wisconsin Republicans weren't doing enough to investigate the allegations that President... I'm sorry... Former Vice President Joe Biden somehow stole Wisconsin from him. I don't know. That's alleged. So the review is expected to cost taxpayers at least $686,000. Hey, those people flush that kind of money down the toilet when they wake up in the morning. So we can, we can spare that kind of change. Still go ahead and hook us up. An associate press review of presidential results in six key battleground states, including Wisconsin, found fewer than... 475 cases of potential ver, a number that would have made no difference. Now, this is all. I'm, now, I'm reading this article from, of course, a left wing source. Thanks, Soros, you stupid George Soros, you pizza face. Elections officials have referred 31 cases of potential ver to Wisconsin prosecutors in 12 of the state's 72 counties, uh, representing about 0.15% of the Biden's margin of victory in the state. The AP found AP review found the state auditors also found no evidence of widespread fur in the elections. But we all know what really happened. So, anyways, um, it's like seven o'clock. What time is it? Seven, oh, six o'clock. Six ten. It's six ten. We're gonna work out for a little bit longer. Got we're getting uh we're getting our timing chains done and uh, i'm working on that now i'm pulling this down and i've got a honda over there i'm working on uh got a bunch of stuff got a suburban i've got to get running for a guy anyhow we are working hard to save america we are going to not back down there is no way in the world that this is going to end and i want to thank everybody that's uh, been watching all the new subscribers that's i've seen my i've seen that thing coming up y'all appreciate it thank you so very much uh, a lot more bigger things to come. We're working on some really cool shows. Uh, this Way Network, soon to be from the Romeo and Michael show. Uh, we are doing a, uh, we, uh, Shannon from Devoted Patriots. We are doing a, a show once a week on that network. And um, a lot of really good things happening. A lot of good things happening behind the scene. We're organizing. That's the key to our movement. And what we're doing to save America is we've got to organize. We've got to stick together. We've got to, you know, pull all the stops. And uh, we can laugh at the lefty's face. I do it anyways. I do it now. But trust me, we can really get to do it soon. So anyhow, thank you all so very much. Lots of love. God is in control.
Thank you, Romeo. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate all you guys. Great. Y'all are wonderful. Take it easy. Have a good day.